Hello and welcome. I'm Patrick Parker, the CEO and founder of Empower ID, and this is a quick look on Privilege Session Manager. Privilege Session Manager is one of the key components of any zero trust strategy. In order to implement zero trust, you should never have direct unproxied access to servers or resources. So what Privilege Session Manager does is it allows admins to access the servers they need to access, whether they're Windows or Linux, to perform their job duties without ever having network access or direct RDP access or even being revealed the tools uh, to access these systems. So it acts as a kind of reverse proxy for RDP or SSH to allow admins to select vaulted credentials and to use those vaulted credentials to initiate a monitored session to those systems so they can complete their task. So they're not really on the systems, but it gives the, the illusion that they're on those systems to do the work they need to do for a specified start time and end time. And you can also enforce multi-factor authentication in order to access certain high-privileged machines. Um, and, and you can optionally record the sessions as well. So let's take a look at this. So I have a web browser up in Empower ID, and I'm going to log in as a basic level privileged access user in order to access servers that I need to perform some administrative duties. Now, in some PAM models, you could allow the user to just uh, view and check out a vaulted credential. And th in that case, they would have a start time, but they see the password. So the password and the credentials are revealed to them, and they are natively acting as those credentials. So they, all of the other rules apply. They'd have to have network access. Uh, they have to have a lot more access or privilege than you actually need. So they become privileged, where we really want more of the illusion of privilege. They can do the work they need to do, but they never really had the privilege or could take it with them. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Privilege Session Manager. Um, I can see in this system as this user three servers. Um, these could be Windows or Linux. In these, this case, they're Windows. And I can choose to initiate a session. Now, you can implement your zero trust or zoning model so that specific servers are classified in a zone or tier, database servers in one tier, domain controllers in another tier. And in this case, you can enforce this with Privilege Session Management by associating only specific accounts with servers in that specific zone. That way, only those accounts, only domain controller accounts in that zone can log into to domain controllers. Only database accounts can log into databases. And that way, if those credentials become compromised and they're used in some type of pass the hash attack, those credentials will not exist on servers in another tier. So you don't have to worry about them being used for a lateral move uh, very far. So in this case, I have credentials linked to this uh, a proxy account, Patrick. Typically, they're, they're generic and shared. Um, I've already checked out this credential with a start time and an end time, submitted it to the workflow engine. So it can go for approval, multiple levels of approval if required. And that, of course, depends on who I am and which system I'm requesting access to. So very flexible kind of ABAC-based policies. At this point, I have this checked out. Um, I have a checkout record. I can see that Patrick has this credential checked out for this computer, or I mean PAM user actually, uh, with a start time and an end time. Um, it can see that I've actually uh, checked it out, so I've used it already. Uh, and I can force a check-in as a user, or even as an admin, I can choose to force a check-in. So I'm going to use the credential. I'm going to say, okay, I need to get into the server to do some work. It launches the Privilege Session Manager uh, web interface, which is like a reverse proxy. Because again, I'm only going to be able to see that system. It's the illusion of privilege without actually having the privilege. I have no network connectivity. So it's asking me for my master password, which is the encryption key that everything that's shared with me is encrypted with. And that's never stored in EmpowerID, so that if the data is ever stolen, uh, the data is useless. They can't, they can't decrypt it unless they have my encryption key. So it looks like, as this user, I'm in this system. I'm doing some workflow development, let's say. I'm going to uh, open up this self-register workflow. I'm going to add, let's say, at this point, I want to add users to groups, maybe an SAP or AWS or somewhere. So I'm going to drag a shape in there, uh, maybe click it with a line rule. So I'm acting as this privileged credential. 
My session can be optionally monitored or not monitored, depending upon GDPR restrictions or other privacy laws. Um, I can do my work. I have no network access, of course, no VPN required, so you're not opening up uh, a larger attack surface. I really can't access this machine. It's just the web is showing me that I have access, so it's kind of uh, allowing me to do what I want to do. Now, at this point, I'm in a session. Um, if an admin wants to monitor a session, and if you have that enabled, an admin could see these live sessions. And given the proper rights, I'm going to log in as a user called, let's say, Pam Admin, who has a few more privileges. So instead of just a Pam user, Pam Admin has access to some additional interfaces, as you can see. Um, they can see any RDP or SSH sessions that are uh, current or past. I can see the geolocation. So where did this user log in from? Looks like they're in Dublin, Ohio. I could, uh, you know, there's impossible journey detection will prevent anomalous behavior. Um, you can enforce multi-factor, kind of a level of assurance value. Uh, in this case, we did not, uh, but we have all of that information. I could even force a check-in if I want, but in this case, I want to just go in and see this session that's ongoing. So it looks like it's a live session. So if I have the right to engage in a live session, I can choose to connect. That will allow me to jump into this session to monitor and see what's going on. It looks like this user is uh, making a workflow. I'll move the user into another window so I can add some activity. So I can move that workflow shape around. You'll see you have a live view of exactly what the user is doing. So if you see anything you don't like, you could choose to end the session as an admin. Now, once the user closes their session, let's say as a spam user, uh, I'm going to, oh, that was me closing the, the monitoring, but let's say as a, the PAM user, close this session. Now, the closed session, depending upon your policy, um, if it were set to record, then what it'll do is it will create a recording, a video recording of that session. So then in the event you need to investigate some something that happened, let's say, six months ago, you can go back and say, okay, this, this Windows user or Linux user on this machine at this time was tracked by, traced back to this request by PAM user that went for approval to this person or did not go for approval and where they were logging in from. And you can even view the session, view that recording. So if we take a look at this one, we, this session ended, uh, but we can go back and take a look at it now as an admin. And you'll see that we have the video recording. We could go back and investigate and see exactly what they did and say, okay, what happened here? Oh, they added a workflow activity. So that's that's who did that. Um, and we could investigate, but you could also see what else they're doing. If they're doing, trying to demand uh, prompts or other things, you, know, you could investigate that. So again, just kind of to recap, um, the Privilege Session Manager is a key tool in your arsenal, a key weapon uh, in a zero trust strategy because it allows uh, admins to do the tasks that they need to do uh, without granting them the privileges. They never are revealed the credentials, they don't have the password, and the sessions can be monitored and recorded. And of course, there's no network connectivity. I have no RDP access to this machine in Amazon Web Services from, from my system here. I'm, I'm, I'm acting at acting through a gateway. So again, I hope this was valuable. Uh, Privilege Session Manager, one of the easiest ways to get rolling with zero trust and, um, and a very, very valuable tool.